after the Olympics before he actually began boxing as a professional. Thus, I like to see them start even in the amateurs really. Eddie and is doing. You know what? He throws all the good shots, and you find him backing up. That's not what. You who uh, helps him prepare for fights and then comes in and is in the corner during Great that. boxing. You have to be awful good to be able to deal with a force like Eddie in if you don't have a big punch. Right, just a, a mention here, he's bloodied the nose of, into a jackpot when he Whoop. went out with the good man. Right, right hand there. <laughs> Some of this. Well, this is what Larry Goosen did. Whoa, He's laying on the ropes and allowing him to hit him in the side. Stand Clifford Etienne was just physically overpowering. He's trying to do the same thing to Clifford here, who stuns him with a counter right hand. This is Howard Bingham. What you want to do if you got a guy on the rope for a long length of time? It's one more time in the third. See? The rhino gets the better. You don't see many young heavyweights doing that. And that's what it does. That's going to pay off for uh, uh, Clay, baby, to try to lash out, against, uh, lash out again. And the uppercuts are starting to get through the guard. And the left hooks are going around the glove. And ATN is starting to really punish Clay Bay at close range. And here comes Clay Bay with his own rally as he waits for ATN to expend his energy and turns the situation around with right hand counter punches like that. Referee JN throwing too many punches and punching himself out. George will <coughs> get low whenever he wants to so he can control us. Of rounds two and three. Shouldn't have turned into this kind of boxing match. He should have been a boxing match just like he's doing now, not a punching exhibition now for the rhino if you're not going to throw shots and you're not going to keep your match we've had nearly four rounds of heavyweights firing like this and not a single Look for power shot when they present themselves play they landed a counter right uppercut likes it came He's turned southpaw, Clay Bay. Clay Bay turned southpaw right there. Another little nuance in his game. Larry, way back at the beginning, sophisticated. He weathered the storm early. He saw those opportunities, and now he's punishing Etienne with counterpunching brilliance in the middle of the ring. Carely do. Now, he called himself a chameleon who can adjust to whatever Etienne. Well, Etienne said he likes to be in the blender. Well, Clay Bay says, okay, let's get in the blender and mix it up. He's all busted up. And Bay waiting for ATN to mount them all. Because he dug himself a big hole early in the fight, allowing ATN to dominate the action. He's hurt. Clay Bay countering again. Switch to counter. Boom, like that. Uh, and then comes right back into press the action. Head. And a good counter right here by Clay Bay. And ATN keeps going. Dealing with adversity. The fight is scheduled for 10. And after that, we'll now go for it. And he playing now. Clifford ATN turns him around and puts him into the corner and hits him hard with two big left hooks. And they just have a tendency to wait too long. Hard right hands over the top by eight. Trying to seal the deal against Lawrence Clayback. Those are big shots. I'm not sure Clayback can weather this. These are huge shots. Clayback standing and taking. Jay Nady yells at Clayback, you've got to punch. And Clayback does. Conditioning. Uh, conditioning. I'm not Lawrence Clayback and Clifford ATN, and with 10 seconds to go, the crowd ought to express their appreciation for a terrific performance by two American heavyweights. The grit and the determination with which these two guys finished the fight. There was a moment there when you thought the fight should stop. He's standing up and taking punches. All for the winner by unanimous decision. The Black Rhino, Clifford A.T.